Hi, I'm Dan Palomino with KW Big Island and the Hawaii team. And as you know, when we're doing these monthly updates, I'm telling you what it's like to live, work, and play. And of course, buy luxurious, fantastic real estate in, here in Hawaii. But for this month's video update, I'm doing something a little bit different because I wanna tell you about all the luxury opportunities that are happening around the country, and in this case, happening around the globe. Today, I'm gonna give you an interview with my friend, Dane Rasmussen. And before I introduce him, I wanna tell you about this really incredible opportunity. What if you could have your own private island? What if you could have a amazing luxury property on a private island? And what if that could come with all of the amenities and benefits that only few people dream of? Well, that is Key Chapel. And we're gonna tell you all about it. And I wanna welcome my friend, Dane Rasmussen. Dane has been in the luxury real estate space for over two decades with Inspirato and with exclusive resorts. And now he's charged with selling a billion dollars worth of real estate on an island 13 miles off the coast of Belize. Welcome, how are you? Thanks, Dan, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, what an amazing project. I gotta fill everybody in. Uh, I was at my luxury conference in San Diego and Dane was one of the speakers at the luxury conference and we got to talking afterwards and then at the cocktail party. And he presented this new project that they're working on in cooperation here with the Four Seasons. And I thought this was just fantastic. And the first thing that popped into my head was, I have to tell this to all of the people in my database, like uh, everybody who should, should know about this opportunity. So tell us what is Key Chapel? Yeah, for sure. And and make sure that if anybody inquires that they they ask you uh, to yes. put you in touch with me. So yes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, so, so Key Chapel is an island paradise. It's, uh, it's three miles long. Um, it sits almost perfectly perpendicular up and down. So there's a sunrise side and a sunset side. Okay. It's a seven minute flight off of the coast of uh, Belize. Uh, you fly into Belize City. Um, mm -hmm. Belize City is, is accessible by 13 um, cities in the United States, uh, okay. direct flight. So it's actually very easy to get to from either coast. Yeah. And uh, it's this amazing new destination where a third of the island will basically be a Four Seasons resort, private residences, hotel rooms, multiple restaurants, kids yeah. programming and whatnot. The other two thirds of, an, of the island is a private golf and ocean club that has a uh, 10 hole uh, Greg Norm design golf course on it and a whole set of amenities for uh, for club members. So it's both a private club and it's a Four Seasons on a private island. And how did this all come about? Did the people at Four Seasons just, you know, were they traveling around the world and said, hey, <laughs> let's buy an island? Actually, no, it's uh, so with many of the Four Seasons, they're actually owned by development companies. And so this is actually um, a developer that has had uh, multiple, you know, developments, probably decades of uh, resort developments. One of the most recent developments that um, his family completed is the Montage in Los Cabos. Oh, Many yeah. people are familiar with or have sure. been to. It's a phenomenal resort. Um, it's uh, it's it's probably the nicest resort I've been to, and I've been to resorts all over the world. Um, that family completed that resort, and from what they learned in that development, they decided that they were going to start to create a series of communities that will both be a private club and it will be anchored by a five-star resort. So it's actually a development group um, out of Mexico City that's actually, that uh, is the developer behind it. And then the Four Seasons is partnered with this. So the Four Seasons creates the longest hotel management yeah. agreements in the luxury hospitality space. And so this is effectively a, a Four Seasons resort on a going forward basis. Um, and so it's really the marriage of those two things that really is what's going to create this. The interesting thing about this destination is that it's not that large, that the Four Seasons will likely manage the entire island. Yeah. Um, even though the Four Seasons will only be a third of it, they'll actually do all of the service throughout the island. Now we're going to look at pictures, and Dane's going to show us some stuff in a second. But what you know, I, I got to think that there had to be major operational challenges to developing an island when they found this. Was it just completely uninhabited? It it was not. Un, it being used, but it was actually in the 80s, this, this island was um, developed for an individual for their own personal resort. Actually, a, a person out of Kentucky owned the island previously and put a golf course. So if you went out and Googled Key Chapel, you could go see 
there was an 18 hole golf course on the island and there was only a, a small number of buildings on the island um, back in, back then. And so it really kind of sat vacant for a, a number of years until the, um, this, uh, this, this, this family came along, found this piece of real estate and actually acquired it from the Belizean government. And so um, it was, it's a, it's a, it's an Island that just makes sense to be a resort. It was just yeah. destined to be developed. And it just so happens that we're the lucky ones that get a chance to do it along with the four seasons. So. Well, before I get into logistics, cause I got all kinds of questions about that, but why don't you show us the property? I don't want to hold people off anymore because I think they have to see it to see how amazing it is. Yeah, for sure. So does that, are you yeah, seeing that screen? I am seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Northern part of the Island. The logo of four seasons is in the way, but just, um, so if you haven't been to Belize before, this part of Belize is very shallow and it's actually protected by a reef system. It's the second largest reef system um, in the world, um, just yeah. after the great barrier reef system in uh, Australia. And so this um, all around the Island is absolutely stunning um, crystal clear uh, water that turns from greens to blues throughout the day based off of where the sun sets. But those are actually over the water bungalows. So we'll have a very much of a feel of like a, um, you know, like a Bali or, or a, um, a Fiji type of experience. Yeah. But over here in this part of uh, in the Caribbean, so it's unique also in the Caribbean. It's also, you know, pretty far south in the, in the Caribbean as well. So it's, it's not in the path of ma- many of the major storms that come through. Belize actually is very infrequent for it actually to get hit by a major storm. Um, which is a conversation for another time, but that's obviously a concern that people have. So this is another shot of the island from above. So the very northern tip, and so the island actually looks like it's heading down. This is actually the very northern tip of the island. These are the private villas that sit around the outside. These are the 24 Four four Seasons branded residences. And these are the hotel rooms, the Four Seasons Resort, multiple pools here, uh, one beach club with restaurants, another cool uh, m- bunch of restaurants here. You can start to see the Greg Norman golf course yeah. sort of creep in at the top. Yeah. This will be an overwater bungalow restaurant. These will be overwater <laughs> bungalows. And, mm-hmm. and then this is the presidential suite. It'll be about a quarter of a million dollars to book the presidential suite. Um, wow. If you want to come in and do make that booking, but <laughs> the amenities are, are, are spread throughout this Island. So that's actually the spa. It's a cenote inspired spa. Yeah. These are the treatment uh, rooms right here. So some workout facilities in here. But the villas that we have for sale are, in fact, actually a part of the resort. Um, they're not down the road or anything. They're actually the main part of the resort. So if you were to buy one of these, you'd own a property at uh, the, the you know future. Uh, one of the coolest developments the Four Seasons is working on. How many so, yeah. properties are available for are going to be available for sale, and how far along are you in the project? <clears throat> for sure. So this this part right here is all under construction. So what's unique about developing real estate on an island is that you have to develop it really. You can't just build one house and then do move on and come back and build more houses. The, the island's too skinny there. So it would be disruptive if we didn't just build that all at the same time. So this entire part of the island is under full construction. There okay. are actually 350 construction workers that <laughs> live on the island full time <laughs> yeah. while the island's being constructed. And so after the, this part of the island is being worked on, and then the golf course right down the center is being uh, redeveloped. Okay. After that's finished, and people actually, if they chose to, they could buy all of this along this side. These are all oceanfront lots. You <clears> see <throat> on this side, the whole island is basically oceanfront real estate. There's no <coughs> properties at all. So it's your choice if you want to be on the sunrise or sunset, but everybody gets to look out at an ocean either, either in the morning or in the evening. All right. So the next question people are going to have is give me an idea of how this works. Do I buy the land and then do I pick a model or do you have models already set? Am I buying a a land and home package together? Yeah, for sure. So if you cho- you kind of have two options. The first option is to take a branded residence and branded residences are um, a very popular way for more and more people to buy second homes in tropical locations because it comes with a few elements that make it much easier than just buying a property that's you know just not affiliated with the resort. Number one is the floor plans are set and you purchase these properties right now with current pricing. They come fully furnished. The floor plans are already set. 
um, you, you just select, you want two bedrooms, three bedrooms, or four bedrooms. Um, with the four seasons, there is a program that they have where you can put it into the rental pool and you can generate income from it. So you don't work with an Airbnb or VRBO, which is also one of the other main benefits is, um, and then when you stay there, you get full access to all the amenities of the four seasons. And typically from an appreciation standpoint, what happens with these developments is many buyers choose not to buy until after the resort opens. And so if you were to buy before the resort opens, there's actually a, a tremendous amount of appreciation that can be um, gained if you actually do beat the rush and, and, and buy before the uh, resort um, is, is open. But this is this is the standard. You can look at this. This is actually going to be either a three bedroom or a two bedroom. The only difference between the, those and a four bedroom is that one of the bedrooms sits on top up here if you end up buying a, a four bedroom property. But it's totally turnkey. If you choose to have that type of I don't want to touch it, I want to be hands off. I want someone else to take care of it, build it, whatever the case may be, you can just buy a branded property. On the other hand, if you just want to go build your own property, you can buy a piece of land and construct a property on the island and work with our architecture team. Gotcha. So you can do it both ways. Let's say Correct. I love this and I just want to do this. Um, and, you know, I'm like everybody else. I'm probably going to be there three, four times a year. Do you guys property manage it for me? Yes, the Four Seasons does. So the Four Seasons okay. has a property man property management arm of their um, of the group, and there's actually a residence manager that is on site that will report directly into the gym, uh, the GM. And so, typically, if you own at a Four Seasons, there's an extra layer of service, concierge service, that's even on top of what you would get if you're a member of the Ocean and Golf Club. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, there's there they'll they'll take care of the property if there's anything needs to be updated they can update it if you do put it in the rental program they just send you a check um it's um and it's basically a 50 50 split in terms of the rental income they'll just send you a check each month and uh and and when you're not using it so it's real easy to put it in you can take it out what you like you can use it when you like you can let friends use it if you like that's obviously not you're not going to be using it for generating income at that time if you're using it or friends are using it but it's real simple to put it in and out of the program yeah, that was going to be my next question of whether or not you could short-term vacation rental these. And everybody's going to ask that question. And I'm sure everyone wants to see if they can make a little money while they're not there. Yeah, you can. And the way to do it is to put it with the Four Seasons. The Four Seasons will rent it as one of their three-bedroom options when you go to the Four Seasons website, like if you to go to the Four Seasons Papagayo or yeah. Four Seasons Anguilla, you would rent a three-bedroom property. Well, actually, it'd be a three-bedroom property that you might own. Um, same thing that happens in at the Peninsula Papagayo location. If you're renting one of those three bedroom properties or four bedroom properties there, it's typically owned by an individual homeowner. Yeah. So how many are constructed now that you have for sale or do I have to come in and start from scratch? And if I do, how long is that going to take? So today we started with 24 branded Four, bed, uh, four seasons branded residences. Okay. Of the 24, we have about nine left. Wow. There's nine left. <laughs> um, so five, three bedroom, two, four bedroom, and two, two bedroom okay. um, that are left. The, the, val the properties range between four and a half million and six and a half million. Okay. So of, think about the whole island being about 120 home sites. Yeah. 24 or of of the properties are actually going going to be constructed alongside the Four Seasons uh, uh, Resort. Yeah. So of that original twenty four, there's about nine properties left today. So it's six and a half million. Is that your top end? That is for the if you if you want to buy the four bedroom property, that's the that's the top end of it, and that it comes fully furnished. Probably has about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of furnishing yeah. equipment, electronics, and whatnot. So. Um, it comes 100% turnkey. You don't have to worry about picking out any of that, um, any of the, that. It just comes comes with it included. And what what is the square footage roughly on the four bedroom for six and a half? Here, you can look. Yeah. I'll go back okay, to the four bedroom. Yeah. So it's about four. It's about 4,800 4, square feet. That's a good size square place. Feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and right there is the ocean. Every one of these properties has their own, has its own linear uh, uh, yeah. number of linear feet. It's about 70 feet of linear feet of yeah. ocean. Um, so yeah, and you're typically looking out over the reef system. If you're looking on the east side, um, if you're on the west side, you get the sunsets. And uh, so yeah. Great point on the reef system. With a reef that large, I would imagine that it's going to protect this island from from a lot of you know, waves and storms that would go that way, correct? 
Yeah, that, that is correct. It's one of the major, one of the other benefits from a geography standpoint, other than it um, being basically in a corner down there. Yeah. So it's hard for hurricanes to hit it yeah. is, is that the reef system, it's very shallow there. And so it's, you know, there's just not as much energy when it comes to storms coming through there. And uh, the, the water is, is, is extremely calm. I mean, think about on the, on the, on the, um, on the sunset side of the island, it's like glass um, here. You can almost see in the picture behind me, you can yeah. see the sunset. You can see it's <laughs> yeah. almost complete. And it's yeah. because the reef system provides a lot of protection. There's a lot less, you know, it's just not very turb- turbulent back in that part of Belize. All right. Now I let's say I've bought, my house is built. I'm there. What kind of amenities can I expect? I mean, I've seen pictures of sailboats and so forth. And, 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 and we know about the Gulf, uh, the spa at the Four Seasons. If you've ever been to a spa at the Four Seasons kind of speaks for my speaks for itself. But I got to yeah. imagine that the scuba and the snorkeling are just off the hook, right? Yeah, this is this is right in that area that people go and Historically, Belize has been a little bit more of a backpacker's paradise is a good way to say it. Many people have been there before there, and there really isn't a major five-star resort there yet, but that all changes when the Four Seasons shows up. Similar to what the Four Seasons did in Peninsula Papagayo and Punta Mita, they really created that luxury market. So if somebody's been to Belize, they've absolutely loved it, but they've typically rented some, you know, sort of like uh, bed and breakfast or stayed in, you know, a three-star hotel typically. It's not, you know, it doesn't, it, it hasn't yet to this point, prior to the four seasons showing up, yeah. been a luxury destination, but that all changes. Um, but it is right in the middle of, um, there's, a, there's a great snorkel area, it's called Hol Chan, which is about 20 minutes to the north of this. Yeah. But literally, you can go right off the coast, and there's all sorts of uh, sea life and sea creatures right there, uh, right there on your doorstep. Have you been fishing yet? How's the fishing it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, absolutely. I'm not a huge fisherman, so I'm sorry if for all of those. I can't really <laughs> talk the lingo, but I, I mean, we caught some major fish while we were out there. Yeah. Um, we actually caught some lobster and we brought back the fish and the lobster. Um, yeah. We had our chef there on site prepare it. But yeah, it's you're, you're not going to have a hard time catching fish. It's very well known for saltwater fly, fish, fly fishing in the area. Yeah. There's also deep sea fishing as well. There's just a Huge variety of different types of fishing. Are you a big fisherman, Dan? I am. I like that. And I like the fact that, you know, you're going to go here and seafood will be on the menu that night. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. great. I play sure. around to golf and take a nap and have a big meal. I'm, I'm a happy guy, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, well this will be, a, you, you could catch a nap there. Um, I'll just show, <laughs> this is the spa. I'll show a picture of the spa. It's a Cenote yeah. inspired spa. And then I got to show you our signature hole. We're going to call yeah. it the blue hole. For those of you that know Belize, it actually has a blue hole that's out in the middle of the ocean that's well known, but this is going to be our blue hole. It'll be uh, the signature hole in the golf course. So yeah, tons of great amenities right there on the island. And it's 10 holes because I obviously the size of the island is a factor. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We but, wanted to make the holes championship length. So we went yeah. from an 18 hole course, which is what it used to be to a yeah. 10 hole course, but we also created a short course, par three course that can be played at night. Um, okay. We will light it up and, and uh, it's great. So yeah, you have a couple different courses to choose from. Yeah, that's great. And all of the usual stuff that I would expect with the Four Seasons, I call them, I tell them I'm coming in town. My refrigerator's stocked with the food that I, you know, that I need beforehand. I, I call them and I tell them I'm having a, a dinner party for eight and we're going to need that catered. And that's that's all handled, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's also a part of the Ocean and Golf Club. There'll be people tripping over each other to try to make sure that all of your groceries are stocked that yeah. all of your spa appointments are made. And in this destination, this this area, this marina, there'll be little shops and areas. So if you do choose to live on the island, you can yeah. actually go and pick up some fresh, you know, fresh meat to prepare or, or go fishing yeah. and, and or go to a local uh, fish area right uh, right here. There'll be a dive shop right here as well. Um, if you wanted to go out and do some of that stuff here on yourself, uh, on your own, it's not like you're in the middle of nowhere. You're literally seven miles off the, or 13 miles off the coast of Belize, uh, city and you're only five minutes away from key cocker which is a, a little island right next to it um, with decent sized population so yeah. you can go get your own stuff you can actually go to restaurants sometimes people like to be secluded but sometimes people like to go out a little bit too and investigate the area sure. so you can do a little bit of both here okay let's let's not hold back anymore let's tell people that because they're where well, they might be watching this interview right now and they're saying i'm in like how do i <laughs> get started with, you know, exploring this possibility, becoming a homeowner, visiting the island to see if I like, how does that all process work? 
Yeah. First of all, they, they should call you and then yeah. um, you, you're going to put them in touch with me. Um, the island is very private. We don't let anybody on the island unless they're serious buyers uh, yeah. to come and evaluate um, purchasing real estate. We have our own uh, 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 village that we've set up for potential home uh, owners to come down and check out the island for two or three nights if they want to. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is get to the Belize City Airport and we'll handle it everything from there. We have a chef, we have a masseuse, we have a yoga deck, yoga instructor. Uh, yeah. We have a whole adventure team that will okay. take you out throughout the whole area. But really, it's to call you, Dan. And then if uh, based off of our conversation and the conversation that we have with the uh, prospective buyer, if it's determined that there's a potential fit there, we'd love to invite you down for a couple of nights and come and check out the island. Sure. Everybody's vetted, I'm assuming, and and uh, to be qualified buyers. And then, uh, you know, and, and so I let's say I'm there. I've had a great time. I've enjoyed it. I'm absolutely in. I pick out a lot and a plan with you and away we go. Is that right? That's correct. You, you would put in an offer to purchase just like any other pieces of piece of yeah. real estate. And you would have, uh, you would effectively have control of that property while you went through a three week due diligence process. And after that three week due diligence process, it would be determined whether or not you're going to move forward or not. If, if you don't, it's a non-binding agreement. It's an, okay. it's an offer to buy. Um, but if you do decide to move forward, that's when we would, um, you, you would sign a purchase sale agreement and, uh, effectively you would start the process of buying a property. Now, what's interesting about buying a property that's in a development like this, that's currently being constructed is that you actually don't pay for the property all at one time. You pay for it really over three increments over the next 12 okay. months as we yeah. hit certain construction milestones yeah. along the way. Um, but there is no financing in Belize. So there's, uh, these are all cash transactions. You can obviously do self-financing. Yeah. But um, that's also important to note. Um, um, it is a it is a free and clear title. There's no long. It's not like it's a 99 year lease, like purchasing in, in Mexico or anything like that. You actually own the land um, and you own the property here in Belize. That was going to ask if it was a fee simple property. There's no land leases, that type of thing. That's great. We have land leases in Hawaii, and people don't like them. People like yeah. to own the dirt uh, that yeah. that it's built on. All right, now, but everything. Let's just hypothetically say the the last nine sold out. I came in a little late. I need to start from scratch. Dane, how long is it going to be? My sense is it would probably take you somewhere between nine and 12 months to build a yeah. property from scratch. Yeah. Okay. Once you selected the piece of land, you can actually, it's, it's going to vary based off of how much linear ocean uh, you would like. Yeah. Um, we start, it's usually anywhere between 75 to 125 linear feet. You can actually purchase two lots next to each other yeah. if you wanted to. Um, that's possible. There's only 120 home sites on the island. What'll be interesting is when, because there's limited real estate on this island, I think that actually will drive up values more. Typically, when there's uh, you know restricted amount of, of inventory in a location like this, it's it, you know home value should you know increase as as the as the island gets closer and closer to selling out yeah. um, over the next I'd say five to ten years. And the beauty part of this is that everybody is oceanfront, right? Everybody's it's oceanfront. Oh, everybody's oceanfront with a sunset yep. or a sunrise. Sunrise or sunset, whichever yeah. side you choose. All of the food outlets are typically on the sunset side. All the restaurants okay. are all on the sunset side. Um, it's breeze. You get a little bit more on the breeze on the sunrise side. So I do find um, buyers are typically, I want sunset or bust, or they're typically, I'll get the sunset. I like to wake up in the sun and I, 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 I appreciate having the, the constant uh, Caribbean breeze. Yeah. And so it kind of depends on what your preferences are there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, it's been so great. I know uh, everybody that's part of my sphere and database are going to be totally interested in this. And how could you not? And again, just to reiterate, if you're interested in this project and want more information, contact me, Dan, here at the Hawaii team. Um, all of my contact information is in this newsletter. You can hit the button and just reach out to me with an email text message, phone call, whatever is the easiest for you. And I will put you in touch with Dane. If for some reason you do reach out directly to Key Chapel and try to get a hold of Dane, please tell him that I sent you. Um, thank you. I really enjoyed this. It was so informative. I love telling all of my clients and, and people in my sphere about unique and terrific opportunities like this. Of course. Yeah. I appreciate you having me, Dan. And, uh, 
hopefully we can make Belize um, as as awesome of a destination as uh, as Hawaii is. So um, we're 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 trying. So yeah. Thanks again, Dane. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Aloha. Bye bye.